she said to me, you know, do you, do you see how Mila is so tightly bound? There's no black around her. At 18 weeks pregnant, Ashley Rooley couldn't believe what the ultrasound technician was telling her. She had thought everything was going to be fine. She said, we should be seeing, you know, more black. That would be fluid. She said, you know, I, I think there might be a problem here. It had been a long two years for Ashley and her husband, Travis. After having their first child, a boy, in 2017, they had trouble getting pregnant again. Throughout that time, Ashley clung to a vision she believes God gave her. But I was praying specifically for a little girl named Mila. I was coming to God with a pure heart and trusting him with that desire and believing that he himself had placed that desire on my heart. Finally, in January of 2020, she got pregnant through in vitro fertilization. I was so excited, I, I was barely containing myself. It was a very emotional day, very excited. Then at eight and a half weeks, Ashley started bleeding. Diagnosed with a subchorionic hematoma, common for in vitro pregnancies, she was put on bed rest. While the doctor expected it to resolve, Ashley called on everyone she knew to pray. No part of me wanted to utter the word miscarriage. It was all I could do to stay strong and, and pray for God to, to carry Mila through, carry me through, give me the strength I needed. I didn't wallow necessarily in the what ifs. It was just a moment of just me and God just talking and begging uh, for him to help and his intervention and guidance. After a couple of weeks, the hematoma did resolve and everything seemed fine. Then another complication. At her 18-week ultrasound on May 6th, Ashley's doctor discovered her amniotic sac had ruptured and her fluid was dangerously low. She said, you know, Ashley, um, this is not a viable pregnancy. Mila doesn't have enough amniotic fluid to practice breathing, so her lungs aren't gonna fully develop and she's gonna suffocate. Um, you know, this pregnancy is a choice now. Um, it, it's, it's not safe for you. It's not safe for Mila. It was then the doctor encouraged her to abort Mila. Ashley said a quick prayer and started to respond. She says the words that came out weren't her own. God just completely came over me, spoke through me, and gave me just this grace. He said to the doctor through me, I begged God for this baby, I prayed for this baby, and I've seen her. In absolute faith, Ashley refused to terminate the pregnancy. Truly, I was angry. I was aggravated listening to somebody tell me this about my daughter, my child, while I'm looking at their heart beating on a screen. How can someone tell me this about my child when, to me, they're viable? Her doctor said the next five weeks were critical. Ashley went on bed rest while family and friends continued to intercede for Mila's life. We were very specific day by day, milestone by milestone, being very specific with the progress of Mila. It was this amazing just ripple effect of just prayer, and you could almost feel it. As Ashley prayed, she clung to God's promise that she was not alone. Came across the verse, Luke 1, Blessed is she who believed there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. I would say in my mind, um, for you have not forsaken me, forsaken me, and I would repeat that. That's where I found a lot of my strength. At 23 weeks, Ashley's amniotic fluid was still low, and she was admitted to the hospital. Doctors put her on antibiotics and steroids to help Mila's development. Doctors were unsure if she would fully develop, even if she made it full term. I was not worried at any time that Mila was going to have any um, deformities or abnormalities. I, I felt and knew that God had promised me a healthy baby. Doctors expected Ashley to finish the remaining 10 to 12 weeks of her pregnancy in the hospital. However, a week and a half after being admitted, Ashley got a miraculous gift. It was on her 33rd birthday. I had an ultrasound which revealed that I had normal amniotic fluid levels. There was no reason to keep me in the hospital. Getting to go home on my birthday and share that joy increased not only my faith, but you know these all of these other people, their faith too. It felt like um, the ultimate gift from God. You know, I just kept seeing in my mind, um, Ashley, God is for you. He's for you. I was just praising God. I was crying. It was, uh, it just felt, it just felt like, 
something that was so impossible. Once home, Ashley continued bed rest and carried Mila to full term. Then on August 30th, 2020, Mila was born. When they put her in my arms, I just shouted. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> thank you, God. It was one of the greatest gifts and greatest moments uh, of my life. While Mila had a couple of minor issues, they were easily corrected in her first few months of life. Today, she is healthy and full of joy. Travis and Ashley believe she is a walking testament to God's faithfulness and love. It taught me that things that seem impossible here are possible with him and to lean on him. I fully trust my doctors and I believe them, but I serve a God who's supernatural. I came to God with desperate faith and I know it was that desperate faith that pleased him.